In this section, we are going to cover the unicellular parasites. Our first group that we'll cover are the amoeba. They are unicellular and some have a trophozoite and a cyst stage. They are all grouped together because they move through the use of pseudopods or that false foot where they can extend out their cell membrane and kind of pull themselves along. Generally, Amoebic infections are thought of as kind of gastrointestinal. So a patient would ingest cysts, which would exist often in the GI tract and the trophozoites, which is the metabolically active motile form can um, invade the colon and multiply, or they can remain in the lumen and multiply. Some amoeba are good at escaping the intestines and can form lesions in the liver, the lungs, etc. cetera. Um, and then of course, they'll be passed in the feces. In the feces, clinicians can see cysts and trophozoites, but the trophozoites are rather sensitive and will often disintegrate prior to consumption by a new host. So generally we're talking about ingestion of the cyst form, which is, in, which is an environmentally stable form. The first species that we'll talk about is Entamoeba histolytica or E. histolytica. This amoeba is found worldwide, um, but it is more common as a disease causing agent in areas that have poor sanitation or have a tropical subtropical climate. Not unheard of in the US, but not terribly common. Flies and cockroaches can serve as mechanical vectors. What that means when I say the term mechanical vector is they can transmit it on their bodies or feet. Like let's say flies walk on feces, they can pick up the cysts. And then if flies walk on your food, they can deposit the cysts from their feet onto your food. So it's not because of them biting you or causing a wound or anything like that. It's just, they're kind of moving the parasite around. Uh, Intamoeba histolytica can also be sexually transmitted. In many patients, the infection can be asymptomatic, but in patients who do develop symptoms, symptoms would include pain, cramping, and the passage of bloody stool multiple times a day. In patients who develop liver abscesses, this is often because the trophozoites have gotten into the bloodstream um, and the liver tries to filter that so the trophozoites kind of get stuck and they can form an abscess. The parasite can also cause necrosis in the large intestine. Um, it does have some virulence factors including attachment and cytotoxin production and it can lead to pockets of ulceration within the intestinal lining. Generally, the infection is diagnosed through stool samples. You're gonna look for the trophozoites and the cysts in the stool. It is possible to do antigen or nucleic acid detection as well. But again, they can be seen in the stool. They are eukaryotic organisms that are quote unquote, relatively large, I guess, as far as eukaryotes go, or as far as cells go. They can be treated with metronidazole, um, followed by other drugs if metronidazole doesn't work. But really prevention through education is important. Um, ap appropriate sanitation, washing one's hands, cooking food thoroughly, that really helps to prevent infection. The next amoeba that we'll talk about is Nigleria fowleri. This is the major cause of acute primary amoebic meningioencephalitis, which is sometimes abbreviated PAM. Sometimes people call this the brain eating amoeba. So we have now discussed bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites that can cause meningitis. The symptoms of Nigleria fowleri infection include a headache, sore throat, fever, kind of a stuffy nose, altered sense of smell and taste, uh, and a stiff neck. This infection is very, very dangerous. Death occurs within four to five days of, of exposure. There have only been four survivors 
out of 150 cases in the U.S. in the past 60 years. And I'll talk about how they survived in, in just a minute. In patients who have Nagleria fowleri, the CSF is just full of red blood cells and motile amoeba. So you can do a very quick examination under a microscope and you'll see the organism there. And you do want to be very quick because this infection is so dangerous that if you don't start treatment within a couple of hours of symptom onset, your patient will likely die. Again, it can be diagnosed through a microscopy of nasal discharge or the CSF. You can culture the amoeba if you grow it with live gram-negative enteric bacteria. That tends to be what it likes to eat. But by the time you culture it, your patient is dead. So just diagnose it through microscopy. Now, I told you that four patients have survived, which probably leads you to believe, and you are correct, that treatment is relatively ineffective. So what treatment has worked? So the combination of all of these drugs listed here, plus therapeutic hypothermia, so decreasing the body temperature to help reduce brain swelling, has led to two survivors, and they were both children. Drugs alone, so no therapeutic hypothermia, just all of these same drugs combined, led to one survivor who had significant brain damage, and this was an eight-year-old boy. And it was if they had done the therapeutic hypothermia, perhaps um, the brain damage could have been avoided or mitigated in some way, but it's really hard to say. So that's three people who've survived. What about the fourth? The fourth was actually back in the 1970s. And when they did culture this patient's isolate, the amoeba are far less virulent than the other ones. So for whatever reason, this patient was very, very lucky that they were infected with a less pathogenic strain of Nagleria fowleri. Here are the number of case reports through uh, 2022. And again, all except for four of these people have died. And these are case reports in the U S you can see the distribution by state here. It is relatively more common in states that are warm because the amoeba thrives in warm, untreated water and generally patients get it when they swim in a natural water source that hasn't been treated that is warm and the water goes up their nose the amoeba can go in from the, the nasal passages into the brain so again very dangerous infection 